I can differentiate different members in every K-pop group. Some members in some K-pop groups have very distinctive features. They tend to stand out more. I only know um, the members of the groups that I'm familiar with. I listen to K-pop over other music. Uh... <laughs> okay. I listen to K-pop like almost every day, but I just listen to what's good and what interests me. Yep. I keep up with the new release of every K-pop song. It's kind of like my life. I dance K-pop, I sing K-pop, and I love K-pop. I think shipping is weird. I don't necessarily think it's weird because you know when you see two people that have great chemistry together, you obviously want to always see them together. It also doesn't necessarily mean that they have great chemistry, then you should like obsessively ship them together and like hate on other people when they are seen together with those members. But sometimes it can get a little bit too weird and like over the line. I think it is okay to change your bias every now and then. For me, I hardly change bias unless for the comebacks like certain members stand out, then I might shift in heart a bit. <laughs> it is kind of discouraged by most K-pop fans to change bias, especially between different groups. Just because you like one K-pop group, it doesn't mean you like K-pop in general. Okay, wait, let me process that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> let me think. Just because you like one K-pop doesn't mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah lah. laughs> Everybody just gotta go here. <laughs> For K-pop groups, obviously the genre is K-pop, so obviously you listen to K-pop. I agree with Amira. Yeah. Same answer also. <laughs> That's great. K-pop idols should be allowed to date. Yes. <laughs> it's their own personal life and they're human as well. I think to me, um, dating is fine for K-pop idols, but some fans out there, they might feel like they're not the right match. If they are dating, they'll lose a chunk of fans and might even affect the whole group. I agree with the way K-pop idols are trained and produced by their entertainment companies. Can I go neutral? There's no neutral. <laughs> Idols, after all, they have to perform on stage, they have to perform well, and therefore they have to receive prior training. However, some companies impose harsh um, rules. Yeah, especially because a lot of trainees nowadays are like super young, so it might be too hard on them. K-pop idols below the age of 14 are too young to debut. Below 14, right? Okay. If they're below 14, that, that means that they probably started their training when they were like 9 or 10. So they're probably missing out on like a big chunk of their childhood. It's better for them to uh, go through their school, spend time with their family members. Female idols have a shorter shelf life compared to male idols. Both male and female are equal. It, it all depends on the group itself. Not all idols have like a very long shelf life, but there are also female idols who have gone like really, really long, be it solo or in group. People like Boa and, st and like even like senior groups like SES like will even come back after so many years of being in hiatus and they still have a lot of fans who support them. I tune in to the show every Tuesday to get my K-pop fix. Especially this season because my ultimate, ultimate favourite uh, bias is the MC, Jeno. Woo! Yeah, so of course I have to tune in. Jeno, I love you. Huh? If the groups that I really like is currently promoting, then I'll definitely watch it. I've also actually seen it live uh, in Korea.